Hello, Brett. I came across your channel through a video by Jeff Campin, and that's how I found out about your subscriber contest. And um, I like the three questions at hand, so I thought I'll contribute and take part. So um, the first question was um, to pick three albums that heavily include any form of narration. So uh, I've chosen three across the vast musical spectrum, so they're all quite different from each other. Um, let's uh, pick them uh, in the chronological order. First, Journey to the Center of the Earth by Rick Wakeman, narrated by the British actor David Hemmings. Now, I haven't heard this album for probably 15 or 20 years now, but um, this was a pretty important record for me when I was a kid, when I was like 14 years old. And I still think this is a pretty good album to guide a young person towards a more sophisticated or interesting music than uh, the kind of music that uh, the child in question uh, gets proposed by the advertising on his mobile phone. So, uh, Rick Wakeman, uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth, a rather famous album uh, with narration on it. Now this is a different kind of story, Seven Souls by Material. Um, this is the album that Material did together with uh, William S. Burroughs, who is reciting a lot of his lyrics uh, uh, throughout the songs. And um, yeah, this is a very fascinating, uh, very intriguing album, and certainly quite uh, original in itself. So, uh, Seven Souls, Material. And finally, Panic of Looking by Brian Eno. Now, this is an album he did uh, with Rick Holland by using uh, Rick Holland's poetry. Um, most of the narration is done by Brian Eno himself, and uh, on, I think on one track uh, it's Rick Holland himself and even other people contributing. Um, Obviously, this is a very calm and very atmospheric album. And interestingly, it's quite, uh, at least it appears to me, it's quite overlooked and a little bit underrated in the large Brian Eno catalog. But I think it is a very good record. And uh, um, maybe people are a little bit uh, scared of the fact that this is uh, basically... Uh, recited poetry um, accompanied by music but it's not like that i mean the the lyrical part and the musical part are brought quite uh, beautifully into uh, into the mix and uh, the poetry is rather abstract so uh, i think it works very fine uh, i think people would like it more if they gave it a try so this was the first question so the next question is five records that I have never shared within a VC video before, or at least don't remember having done so. Um, I just pick some records quite randomly. Um, at least I don't remember having showed them, but I could be wrong. Um, this is Todd by Todd Rundgren. Um, quite a well-known, a uh, well... I could not tell you what the genre of this music is, but this is not so unusual with Todd Rundgren, right? This is a somewhat a uh, interesting progressive glam rock type of music. Uh, and uh, a rather famous double album. So uh, that's that. Um, now, uh, Bitches Brew by Miles Davis. Never shown that before, but... The reason for that is maybe because everybody else has. So <laughs> um, I've never been showing that much jazz records uh, on my VC videos, basically because it's a sphere that uh, I'm still discovering in the course of the last five to ten years. And uh, so I'm still rather discreet about it. Now, 
Fandangos in Space by Carmen. Now I came across Carmen, of course, because of John Glasscock, who later became the bass player of Jethro Tull. And uh, this is his band prior to that. And this was quite a fascinating, highly original outfit combining progressive rock with flamenco. And a rather authentic flamenco, so they really knew what they were doing. Um, I, they only made basically two or three studio albums. and uh, But even here you can uh, hear what a great bass player John Glasscock was. This is quite astounding. Great record. Now something completely different. The Three Degrees with Love. So uh, a little bit of soul music. And uh, from Philadelphia. And um, I have not shown this kind of music that much on VC. Not because I don't like it. Because I actually do. But um, I'm not much of an expert in that direction. So uh, this is a gift I still wait to acquire. But I certainly like this kind of music. And finally, something a tad controversial. Oh, How We Laughed by Death in June. This is a uh, live album containing um, early day material by Death in June. So those are the days when the band basically was uh, Douglas Pierce, Tony Wakeford and Patrick O'Kill. And um, yeah, I mean, um, if it sounds like being recorded somewhere in a in the basement uh, to an audience of 12 people that's because it probably was recorded somewhere in the basement to an audience of 12 people <laughs> so um and the final question was is there is is there any kind of uh band or musician or artist that I like and appreciate but have zero of his albums in my collection and uh, probably there are some. The first name that came to my mind was uh, Akira Ishikawa and Count Buffaloes which uh, was a Japanese outfit uh, playing jazz fusion and jazz rock in the late 60s and early to mid 70s and, uh, well, there's a very simple reason why I don't have any of their albums, because they are just far too expensive. This is one of the really dark alleys of this endless rabbit hole called Japanese music. And um, if you take, like, uh, Akira Ishikawa's wonderful album African Rock from 1971, look, at, look it up on Discogs. This goes for $1,500. And... Uh, Funnily enough, they made another album with the same title, and but different songs, also called African Rock in 1973, I think. Now this goes for $3,000 on Discogs. So um, even if I wanted to buy it on CD, um, those CDs are still above $70, $80, $90. So that's kind of uh, the money we're talking about. And uh, yeah, I'm... Um, I'm just biding my time because sooner or later someone will be really smart and will somehow acquire the licenses for this music and just uh, reissue that. And uh, then I will go and purchase it for $22 a piece. So um, there's still so much wonderful music outside. I just don't need to get worked, o worked up over one or two albums that I just can't get. So uh, that's uh, this question. And uh, I hope I have uh, fulfilled the assignment and uh, wish you a nice Sunday and have a good time and keep it spinning and goodbye.